JMZ V learning program. This is grade 9 science lesson. The name of the lesson is supports and movements of organisms. The earth is full of amazing animals and plants with the lots of variety. There is a famous saying the beauty of the nature is unity in the diversity. Today we are going to see this beauty of the nature. So, the name of the lesson is supports and movements of organisms. Now we are now we are going to see this beauty of the nature. So, first of all we are going to see this movement. This one movement. Do you know the meaning of movement? Movement is the change of the location. The first one you should must remember this one. Change of the location. This one. Change the location of their whole body. Of their whole body. Uh, or part of its body. Whole body or parts of its body. This is the most important part. I am just I'm going to highlight this one. Response to a stimulus. What is it? Response to a stimulus. Movement, the meaning of the movement, the change the location. Change the location is here. Change the location of their whole body. Of their whole body or parts of parts of body and response to a stimulus. Response to a stimulus is known as the movement. So, in here we are going to see what are the animals that shows the movement. So, there are some animals you can see it amoeba, euglena, paramecium, human and those are the animals in a, um, some examples are there. So, today we are going to see these animals, how they are show their movements. So, now we are going to see these animals and their movements. So, and also appendages of these animals, right. So, who are the animals? First one is amoeba. So, what is the appendages for this amoeba? Zeudopodia. Amoeba. Did you see when I am just writing the amoeba, I just underline it. What is the reason? But, but in here, in my slides, but when I am just here, print it amoeba. So, there is a reason for that. This is amoeba is a scientific name. When you are writing the scientific name, you have to underline it. It is a rule. So, when I am uh, some, uh, sometimes when the printed book or sometimes when they are printing those names, they, they are just coming from a Italy form. But when you are writing this name, you have to write it and underline it. So, when you underline it, we already know that this is a scientific name. So, next one we are moving to the Euglena. So, this one is Euglena. You can see the shape and there is a, there are a lot of uh, factors are there. You already are. Uh, only the you just show the features of this euglena and this euglena shows the appendages. Which kind of appendages is that? It is a flagella. What is it? Flagella. So, now we are moving to the paramecium. Amoeba, euglena, paramecium, all these animals are what? What are they? Those are protista. The, those animals belong to the category of protista. Amoeba, Euglena, Paramecium. Right? So, those are the appendages. What is it? These are the Pseudopodia, Flagella, Cilia. Those are the appendages. Now, I am just discuss. Right? So, now, human. You already know. It is a famous example. Right? Uh, human, what is the appendage that they are using? It is definitely limbs. Right? So, now we have the idea of 
what are the movements that shows these animals now we have the uh, basic idea now we are just moving to your textbook you can turn to page 90 and there is an activity 8.1 uh, there is a table so name of the animal and appendages you have to fill it there is a name of the animals in one column the other column is appendages used for the locomotion the first one they uh, this is done for you amoeba it's what is the appendages that they are using zeudopodia so that is it so there are some examples are there you can fill it now you can fill the table now we are just moving to the next one now this is the uh, lesson so we are still link the support movements and movements of organisms so bones muscles and joints do you know the invertebrates who are the invertebrates now we are going to see the who are the invertebrates right invertebrates What are the category of invertebrates? Nidaria, Nidaria, Annelida, Mollusca, and Arthropoda. They use muscles. What did they use? Muscles. Right? So, what is the other group? Invertebrates means having back, uh, without backbone. Right? Uh, there is another name for the backbone. It is a vertebral column. And here, a vertebrates means hmm. vertebrates. Again, we can categorize into into some groups. First one is pieces. What is it? Pieces. The other one is amphibia. Next one, reptilia. And aves. And mammals. All of them are used what? Bones and muscles both. Remember that, right? Muscles and bones. So, here we can categorize into two organisms, we can categorize into two vertebrates and invertebrates. Who are the vertebrates? Having a backbone and invertebrates means without a backbone or vertebral column. Invertebrates we can categorize into four groups, Nidaria, Annelida, Mollusca and Arthropoda. They use only the muscles. 
and vertebrates. Who are the vertebrates? Pizzas, amphibia, reptilia, aves and mammals. Those animals used muscles and bones. Now we have the good idea about muscles, bones and joints. Now we are just moving to the next slide. So here uh, normally bones, muscles and joints we can categorize into two. Human is, uh, is skeletal system and human muscular system. And you already know who are the uh, vertebrates that using muscles and bones both together. And these are the um, uh, other one invertebrates they are using what? Musc uh, muscles. Now we are just moving to the next slide. This is the most important part of this lesson. What is it? Human elbow joint. What is it? Human elbow joint. So, there are some, how many major parts are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, first you have to discuss humerus. What is it? Humerus. You can see it in my here. You can not see it in this side. You can see Inside of the bicep muscles, you can see the humerus. Here is the humerus. Right? Here, this side. This side, you can see the tricep muscles. What is it? Tricep muscle. And this one, we call it this one. What is it? Anterior band. What we call it? Anterior band. And the upper part is here, it is a bicep muscle. And end of the bicep muscle, you can see bicep tendon. What is it? Bicep tendon. And here ulna and here is radius. Normally, still you are not familiar with these words. That is why you have to pronounce it again and again. When you are pronouncing something again and again, you can just get the idea. And you are just familiar with these words, right? What is it? Humerus, bicep, tricep muscle, anterior band, bicep muscles, bicep tendon and ulna and the last one is radius. Now, we are just familiar with these words. Now, we are just moving to the other uh, slides. So, we can, we can see what is it. This is. You already know the parts of the elbow joints. Right? You already know it. Now, we are just see how the elbow joints work. How the elbow joints work. Right? So, first one is bend in the hand. What is it? Bend in the hand. Turn to page 91. There is a, there is a activity 8.2. Turn to page 91. There is activity 8.2. You can see. You can see the activity 8.2. You can see this. How the elbow joint works and you can see bending the hand, stretching the hand. Now we now we are going to see this how this how the elbow joints work. So this is this is it, right? So this elastic band we consider it as a bicep muscle, and this one we consider as a tricep muscle, right? So, when you are just bicep muscle contract, bicep muscles is contract, what happened to it? So, when just bicep muscle is, is contracting, what, what can you see, see about that? So, what happened? Hand is bent. Hand is what? Bends and lifts up. Hand is bent and lifts up. When the tricep muscle is contracts, what can you see? This one is what? Stretching the hand. You can see. When the tricep muscle is contract, you can see the hand is stretching. And bicep muscles come to the or original form. Bicep muscles comes to the original position. When the tricep muscles contract, the hand is stretched. Can you see it? 
when I am just going to contract the tricep muscle, you can see the hand is stretched. Right? What happened to the bicep muscles? Bicep muscles comes to the original position. So, here this is it. This is bending the hand, bending the hand and stretching the hand. Bending the hand and stretching the hand. Bending the hand, what happened in, when you are just bending? What happened? It's a bicep muscle should contract and hands its lips up. When you are stretching the hand, bicep muscles come to the original position and hand is stretching. We already discussed about the movements of animals. Now we are going to discuss support and movements of plants. First, is there are two types of plants, non-woody plants and woody plants. What, are, what is the non-woody plant? Non-woody plant, we can get balsam. It's an example for the non-woody plant is balsam. And the woody plants are, there are a lot of woody plants in diversity. What is it? The famous example is mango. Normally, non-woody plants means they are, there is a main factor that they need it. What is it? It is a water. But woody plants, they don't need the water, they have it, they have more than that lignin and most chemical substances in woody plants. Now, what is the meaning of movements of plants? First, we are going to see the meaning of movements of plant. Growth of a part in a plant. L look at, growth of a part, it should be a part. This is a part. growth of a part in a plant as next one most important part is the response to a stimulus what is it growth of a part in a plant Gro response to a stimulus now there are two types of uh, there are two types of movement of plant tropic movements and nastic movements now we are going to see what is tropic movements and nastic movements in here normally plants grow to, as a response to a stimulus can you see what is response in here definitely it should be a light what is it it's a light this plant responds to a what light and here change the location they are just changing the location due to a target change this plant, they are just change the location due to a turga change. Now, you have the idea, meaning of the movements of plant and what are the movements of plants? Tropic movements and nastic movements. The main uh, movements is tropic movements and nastic movements. So, now we are going to discuss about the tropic movements. Tropic movements means occur due to the effect of growth substances here here should be growth substances what is it effect of growth substances tropic movements there are six tropic movements you have to study how many tropic movements you have to study six first one Positive tropism or sometimes we are just telling positive geotropism. Positive tropism or and the negative tropism. Positive geotropism means look at this diagram. This is show positive phototropism by the shoot system. This is the positive phototropism. And here is negative geotropic. Positive geotropic and negative geotropic. Positive tropism towards the stimulus. Stimulus means changes. Positive we consider it as a towards the stimulus and negative tropism away from the stimulus. Negative geotropism means away from the stimulus. Away from the stimulus means we are just think about the gravity always in where yeah. gravity you can see it should it should be a downside gravity you can see the downside Gra gravity 
gravity T in here. So, always gravity in here now we consider this one always where towards the stimulus we consider positive geotropism that means gravi gravity also downside and roots also towards the earth. So, roots also towards the earth both are in gravity also in downside and roots are also in the downside both are in same side so we consider it's a positive geotropism but negative geotropism is opposite of the gravity and it's just these leaves are just grow to the away from the stimulus we call it this is a negative geotropism and this is the famous example look at it it's a these roots are towards the earth we consider it as a negative and here is a here is a, a positive and here also these roots are away from the earth so this is the negative tropism famous one So, where you can see the gravity? Gravity you can see here. Right. Towards the gravity, we consider it as a positive geotropism away from the earth we considered it as those are the shoot system away from the gravity we considered these negative negative geotropism so now we have the basic knowledge of positive geotropism and negative geotropism those two movements belong to the which category tropic movements we already discussed positive geotropism and negative geotropism now we are just moving to the other four movements look at it those movements also belong to the tropic movements right what is it positive hydrotropism what is it positive hydrotropism and here positive chemotropism, positive hydrotropism, positive chemotropism. This one is positive thigmotropism. So, here. Still you are not familiar with these words, no? First time you are ju just think what is this tropism and those po po uh, positive hydrotropism, uh, positive chemotropism. First pronounce it. Then you are just a uh, little bit in later, you can familiar with these words. Positive hydrotropism. First, you, uh, the meaning of positive hydrotropism, look at this diagram. You can see some roots and the water are there, right? So, the meaning is that roots moving, these roots are moving towards where? Where you can see it. See, this is the water, right? These roots are moving towards the water water source this is a one type of water source no so these roots moving towards the water source so if you are for, uh, sometimes you forgot the, uh, these words no so remember i'll just give a hint little bit so it's a positive positive hydrotropism right 
sometimes you forgot the meaning of this positive hydrotropism. You should be little bit cunning, right? Hydro means you already know the meaning of hydro. So what is it? It should be a water. So if if this if there are any diagram that shows and they will ask what is what kind of movement is this? Now you already see the roots and water sources there. So it should be definitely this roots uh, towards the water source. No, it should be a then what kind of movement is it is? It's a positive hydrotropism. Now we are just moving to the positive chemotropism. Chemotropism, this is a pollen, right? So, these are, you can see, what is it? You can see this one is pollen and here ovule. Movements of pollen tube towards the ovule. What is it? Growth of a pollen along the tube. Along the tube. Can you see it? Can you see this one? Growth of a pollen along the tube towards where? Towards the ovule. Towards the ovule. Here also. Side down. Growth of a pollen along the tube towards the ovule. We considered it as a positive chemotropism. Now, the other one is positive thigmotropism. Positive thigmotropism. Can you see what is this one? What kind of what kind of plant is this? Should be a definitely you can see it's a passion fruit plant, right? So this is a coiling, what we call it coiling. Coiling of trend reels of in passion fruit with the what? With the support. We call is there any support? We considered it as a positive thigmotropism. As an example, passion fruit. Now we have the six movements. You have the idea of six movements of trophic movements. Now we already uh, we already discuss positive geotropism, negative geotropism, positive hydrotropism, positive chemotropism, and positive thigmotropism. Now we are just moving to the movements of plant root. What is it? Movements of plant root. I already explained, right? Positive, if growth is towards the stimulus, what kind of stimulus is there? This is you can see, uh, here is, what is it? This is the light now. You can see the, some rays. So, this is the stimulus. So, if growth is towards the stimulus, we consider it as a positive. If growth is away from the stimulus, the stimulus is where the gravity in the downside. So, this growth is away from the stimulus, we consider it as a negative. Right? So, you have the good knowledge about the positive and the negative of those plants movements. Right? Nastic movements. Nastic movements means not related. It is not related. Now we are going to see to what? It is not related. Not related to the growth substances. It is not related to the growth substances. But mostly, mostly due to the third change. It is not related to the growth substances. But mostly due to the third change movements or turga change. Now we are going to see those nastic movements. How, how many movements are there? Four movements of nastic. There are four nastic movements. You can see it here. The first one is we are going to see nictonastic movements. So what is it? Nictonastic movements and this one is haptonastic movements. This one seismonastic and photonastic movements. There are four types of movements, nictonastic movements, haptonastic movements, seismonastic movements and photonastic movements, right? First one is nictonastic movements. Now, look at this diagram. It is a, what kind of plant? Sometimes it is a, 
uh, it's just like a <coughs> mimosa or katrumurunga both are same not that i am i am not just saying the plant are same here you can see this movement those type of plants sleeping or shrinking what is it sleeping or shrinking of leaves when dark falls when dark falls is also there then you can see the some plants sleeping so as an example katrumurunga and mimosa also same and tamarind not only that tamarind also same here haptonastic movements you can see this is the hand when he just touch this plant you can see what is it it's that plant suddenly sleeping right sleeping or shrinking of leaves when you touch it right when you are just touch it what happen to the plant plants going to sleep example mimosa right here seismonastic seismonastic this is the most important part can you see this one this one there is some difference are there can you see so this is exhibiting what sleeping movement during a shock suddenly when shock is there what happened to the plant plant is sleeping look at it when he just touch this one it's different from this one and this one right this one is haptonastic movement this one is seismonastic movement when this person touch this one he just got the shock suddenly this plant what exhibiting sleepy and photonastic movement i told some movements sometimes you forgot those movements right so you are not familiar these words no first just identify these words photonastic movement what is the meaning of photo photo this one this word we are just leaving this nastic movement what is the meaning of photo photo means just like the simply meaning is what light right so can you see this is light so this plant what happened blooming of flowers with the stimulus stimulus is light photonastic movements means what these flowers blooming to the towards the light we considered it as photonastic movements now we are you have the idea those four movements in nastic movements so what is first one nictonastic movements haptonastic movements seismonastic movements and photonastic movements okay. now we already discuss what is it we already discuss the haptonastic nictonastic and the seismonastic and photonastic movements those movements belong to the what kind of movements it should be nastic movements and we already discussed the tropic movements and nastic movements we now we are just moving we already discussed movements of animals and movements of plants now we are just moving to the another one it should be the famous point is there palvinus first maybe you are just going to heard this one in first time palvinus located at each leaflet where you can see this palvinus it should be what located at leaf leaflet and petiole you are familiar with this word petiole and leaflet when you were in grade 7 you are, you already have these words right so located at each leaflet and petiole base help for the movement this is look at this diagram so it's nicely show this one is palvinus what is it palvinus see can you see this this one is little bit zolan no it there some zolan is there so palvinus means it's located where you can see leaflet and the petiole you can see it leaflet and the petiole so we call it this special feature we call it palvinus now is the we already discussed tropic movement nastic movements now we are going to just discuss about another movement is there tactic movements what is it tactic movements this movements can you identify this animal what is it 
it should be this one is what chlamydomonas right this one is what chlamydomonas it's a microorganisms it's a where uh, this organisms belong to the algae category so related with the direction of stimulus what is it related with the direction of stimulus whole organisms not the part of the organism it should be whole organisms response to the stimulus it should response to what stimulus so as an example it's a chlamydomonas chlamydomonas also a scientific name when you are just writing this name of in your writing book you should underline it this is the most important part now i am just going to a little bit summarize what i just teach you first on we discuss movements of animals movements of plants now we are just going to discuss about in situ conservation the simple meaning is conservation of organisms in it is living environment is in situ conservation what is the main point here conservation of organisms whether they sometimes whether they are just maybe a plant maybe a animal in its living environment so we considered as in situ in situ conservation right so most of the plants and animals we should conserve in sri lanka there is a famous place it's a vil vilpattu reserve we should conserve we considered at is it in situ conservation in sri lanka this is the place that strictly reserved forest protect indigenous plant in this place what is it vilpattu reserve those are the plants we should conserve what are the plants ebony plants white eggs and satin woods those plants are very rare and we should conserve those plants now i am going to summarize this lesson so what is what is the lesson name support and movements of organisms first one we discuss movements of animals amoeba paramecium euglena human those animals belong to the this category right next one we discuss movements of plants movements of plant and finally we discuss in situ conservation these are the three major facts that we discuss in this lesson i hope uh, you understood this lesson and there is some hint is there look at it we are just embedded in a biological world and related to the organisms around us just think about this and you have the good knowledge about this lesson i hope you understood the lesson thank you